Alright, we're about to fly into Stud Lake with Deep Wilderness Outpost. John Small, our host. How are you, sir? Good, Mike. How are you? Good. Ready to go. Jimmy, what are you saying, buddy? Well, I'm anxious. We got a good pilot, apparently. <laughs> Boys? Hey, ready, good ready to go. Ready to go? Absolutely. Me too. Alright. In sync. There we go. And it's, I think the lake is well named. I think so. Stud. <laughs> We're at Stud Lake with Deep Wilderness Outposts, uh, north of Nakina. It's about 146 kilometers northwest of Nakina, close to the Albany River. And uh, we got the whole crew here. We're about to head out. It took us a, a pretty good long time to get things organized. We got a group of six here. The D-man in this corner, Adam Dempsey. Howdy. Joe Condrat. Yes. Hey, man. Bob Sterling, St. Croix Rods. The V-man. Very happy to be here. Jimmy and uh, Ralph. <laughs> He's the go. man. Ready to start. We're going to do a little video with uh, to show how amazing your electronics are <laughs> later. It's it's really impressive. So the objective is primarily walleyes, I think, right? I mean, I believe so. we're going to we're going to try and target some some larger pike, but uh, it is late August. Like we're a day away from September, I believe. We have a high of 14 Celsius here. Everyone's bundled up. It's uh, full metal jackets here today with fleece and Gore-Tex. Supposed to be some scattered showers, but uh, this is at the first little initial foray out onto the lake. And this is almost like we're in a in a Disney movie here with these little these little birds, which no one can identify, flying around by the thousands. Look at them. They're like orange and yellow. I can get right up to them. Watch this. Look at that. Oh, they're everywhere. Yeah. It's really just cool. No white. Yeah. All right, let's go get them, boys. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's a creek connecting Little Stud to Big Stud. We had a little bit of a sandbar where we had to lift the motor and push it through right at the entrance. And uh, it's pretty shallow. So far, so good. There we are. Other lads are just ahead of us there. <laughs> Looks like there's another sandbar here, just as you exit it. <laughs> All right, we made it to Big Stud Lake. It's our first day. The other fellows are right there, over there. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's a cluster of a uh, couple of islands here, Mid Lake. Uh, first thing we're doing is just driving around trying to find some structure and we're throwing markers down Trying to get a feel for what's going on. We're starting with uh, jigs. This is a, we're, We'll figure out what works, but this is what I'm using uh, Just a small little black head and uh, it's almost like a golden shiner. This is a paddle tail made by Weston golden orange How's the structure look on this lake? Well, let's just see if I can catch one instantly <laughs> It's always there, a good start. There's um, there's some interesting structure, like where I threw the marker out right there, it's like 10 feet right there. And uh, 20 feet over to the left, it's three, four feet. And, uh, yeah, it's just, all over the map. We just started a drift in 16. It's like 16 to 20, kind of all around the edge of this. Um, this is like the point of the island. It extends way out into the lake, like a long way. It's been a weird weather day. Yeah, it's a little volatile. But if you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. Okay, that did not take long. I knew I shouldn't have put the camera away. That didn't take long. That was the first cast, or maybe the second cast. That's actually a pretty nice size volley. That's how it's done. Beauty. Yeah, wow. 
Sweet. That's exactly how it's done right there. Hold on, hold on. Back you go. We have a, a double. I got mine in the boat already. You know what? I think Stud Lake is a pretty good walleye lake, I would say. Yeah. Pretty quick. Good start. The other boys are just over there pounding on fish. What an awesome lake. Right on. Light tackle and jigs, too. It's fun. All right, let's see. We can do this on cue. Ten feet of water here. I got a mark right under the boat here. And where are the other boys? They're Just right over there. there. They're right there. Yeah, they're in a bunch of fish too already. It's kind of a it's a nice day. It's not horrible, but we had like monsoon rain the second we got out. It's kind of windy. It's warmed up a lot though. But yeah. Now we got some sunny breaks. I got a really light head. Well, it's a quarter ounce head. And uh, long casts. I mean, we're only fishing in 10 to 12 feet of water here right now. They seem to be hitting at the 10 mark, eh? I don't know. I mean, we just started. We're just, nah. but, uh, just slowly popping it back. We just put the anchor down. But let's see if I can do this again. I'm just curious because back where I cast it there that time, there's a it gets even shallower. Like another 30 feet past that, it's like three feet deep. He's a decent fish. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing wrong there. No, lots of these guys, like they're all nice yeah. chunky walleye. Oh okay, yeah, let's see. So right where the marker is right there. Mm -hmm. 30, 40 feet out that way, it's like 18 feet. And same thing in that direction there. It drops down to 15. But towards the shore there, it just gets shallower and shallower and shallower. Another walleye. Another day, another walleye. Another day, another walleye. Oh. <laughs> Lots of guys that size. Whoop, oh, I got one. Oh. Trying to multitask here. here why don't I take the camera over? Return the favor. This one is maybe the smallest walleye that we've actually caught so far. Now this is in like 15 feet of water, right on the edge of this. Uh, this is a thing. Well, it's not that much of a thing. I have Bob Sterling with me from St. Croix Rods. When he sees the, this video footage, he's going to cringe. I just candy caned the rod there. <laughs> That's the worst thing you can do. I'm going to talk about this later. But as far as pre-trip planning goes, um, the satellite imagery that's available in this day and age, some of it is so unbelievably uh, detailed. And well, the olden days, or whatever, before technology, we'd get the pilot to fly over the lake. And we'd sit there with the map in our hand with a pen, and you can spot structure from the air, looking for offshore structure and marking any obvious spots. So now we go on various different satellite imagery and you can zoom right in with the crosshairs, get the latitude and longitude, and then upload these uh, spots like before the trip, like right onto the GPS with little flags. So you have a bunch of preset spots, you know, to do your homework at home. And this spot that we're on here right now, I could see it from the air. You could see you could see the shallow rock from the air. We're hundreds of yards from shore. Um, you know, if you just went in blind, you might never find this spot, actually. So it's absolutely amazing technology these days. We probably, I have probably a dozen spots marked with GPS coordinates, like absolutely to, you know, within a foot, super accurate, of offshore structure on the lake. <coughs> And everyone will be holding fish. I can pretty much guarantee it. So I actually wasn't going to say anything to you. Like what I was going to do was just say like, I'm like Kirk. I'm going by instinct. I fish by, by instinct. I think this spot looks good. Let's just try it here and just blow your mind. How did he know that? I have no idea. He's amazing. It's the famous Borger guarantee. Cut off. This is in like 18, 19 feet of water out off 
the, uh, the deep edge of this shelf here. Hmm. This is where, I don't have one handy, but we're going to start throwing blade baits. So, you know, simplest lure ever that gets overlooked by a lot of walleye anglers. But we use them casting and jigging in deeper water, like all the time. <clears throat> the hits are savage. We're doing something a little different here. We're, we're jigging with blade baits in like 40 to 50 feet of water. We're getting the odd walleye. Joe had a bite off from a very big fish not that long ago. And, oh, yeah. Uh, little hammer handle. But uh, blade baits are fun. They hit them so savagely. Yeah. Oh, I got one. Oh. Here. Tag team. It's still our first day. We're just still learning the lake. And that looks like a good fish. Joe, I think you got a better fish on there. <laughs> all right. Let's see what you got here. Oh, it's another, it's another, it's another little pike. But uh, prior to turning on the video camera, we caught <laughs> half a dozen walleye, nice, nice size walleye in deeper water. Yeah, I'm glad I put on the little leader. A yeah, of we got the little single strand titanium six inch leader on. All right, we're nearing the end of our first day. We still got lots of light left, but we're going in for dinner shortly. And uh, trolling along this sharp breaking shoreline here with a big live target, big live target perch. And uh, got a pike just a second before this one. I think it doesn't matter. The nice thing about this lake, there's so much structure. There's a couple deep basins, like the deepest water up there was like 80 feet. It's right here, it's 50. Right where I hit this fish, we came over a hump, then it went up to like 28, and there was a bunch of fish on the break. You can troll, you can bottom bounce, you can jig, any way you like to fish. Pull bouncers. Every way we've tried to fish, we've caught fish. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you can hone your skills. Practice, practice. There are all these clone chunky monkeys. What I like about these baits here, these, uh, lots of them that size, these <clears throat> live target perch, it's a fairly big lure, but it's small enough that a walleye will hit it, but it's a, it's a good option for bigger pike too. It's not a musky size, but a big pike will eat that, so it kind of serves like a dual purpose, you know, it'll, it'll attract walleyes and uh, big pike. It's been a pretty nice first day. Not, no complaints considering the wind and the weather and it's always a bit of a challenge on new, even on smaller bodies of water like this figuring things out. We don't have any intel on the lake other than spots that we marked on the map ourselves. But uh, it's not that hard to figure things out. I think I've done more living today than you normally do in three days. Nice. All right, boys. First night at Stud Lake. Woo. We've Happy got names. we have quite the feast, and I would say it's thanks to Jimmy. Thank you, thank thank you, you Jimmy. Jimmy. Thank you, Cheers. Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy. Great Thanks job. Kill it on your behalf. Shot, killed, good. Let's have a little rundown of what we're actually eating here. We've got uh, venison tenderloin, barbecued. We have mashed potatoes and gravy, uh, garlic bread, fresh corn on the cob. That's We've got uh, Caesar salad. Wow. And a little bit of vino on the side. What a what a great, great, great way to cap off a great first day. We got a beautiful morning, day two. Just gorgeous. This is probably going to be, according to the weather forecast, best day. the best day of the week. About 9 a.m. We're kind of trying to get through the shallow area into Big Stud. We have poles. You want to go on the other side? That would help. Nice and warm today. No, no wind, no rain. It's going to be a perfect day for shore lunch. Shore lunch. I've been promising Mr. Bob Sterling from St. Croix Rods a shore lunch for probably the last five flying trips. And I broke down. We're going to do it today. We have a brilliant, brilliant day today. We kind of just got going here on day two on Big Stud Lake. We're actually 
trolling. It was named after the uh, people on the guy the on the tiller. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, that's we're we're trolling uh, for Pike in this very deep water next to Lake Rock, fast breaking structure, and uh, with these live target perch crankbaits. And what a shock! Joe just slammed a walleye. Yeah, you almost ripped it right out of the. Uh... Yeah. We're having a shore lunch, but we don't need to keep that guy yet because it's several hours away. Yeah, we want them fresh. We like that live target perch crankbait. I was talking about it yesterday. It's kind of good for walleye and pike. The fun thing about this lake is like everything works. Yeah. So we're trying all this different stuff. So earlier this year, Brad Van Reenen, thanks Brad, from Live Target Lures. Thanks Brad! <laughs> sent me these uh, these new Live Target spoons. I haven't honestly had a chance to use them that much, so. Slam! Yeah. What a seriously savage. Yeah, man. that it nearly ripped it right out. Oh, it was crazy. It's just a little walleye. Nice and clean little walleye, but uh, let's see if I can grab this without killing myself. Do the world Have favor. a look at this spoon. It looks like a golden shiner. It's uh, it's really deadly. So yeah, I think cool. anything is gonna work, but like jigging in deeper water, the hits on uh, jigging spoons and blade baits are Savage. a lot different from the plastic paddle tails you normally use. They just they hammer them big time. So just letting it out. We got a little bit of a breeze here, south wind. Just right over the side of the boat, right next to an island here. There's actually a deep basin that's 50 feet, like right there. And right under the boat, it's 20 right here, right tight against the island. And uh, just ripping it up. And like that last one hit on the upswing, and it was just like. Yeah, it was great. Bang. So today's shore lunch. Joe and I just set everything up on an island. The guys are going to meet us later. And. Um, this is something I used to do in my canoeing days. I rarely use the saw, so all this bleached white wood on the top of the beaver lodges is just perfect for uh, cooking fires. Jurassic beaver. Yeah, there's a big beaver in there. Joe's you know, a little Got worried. Thumbs and going for beaver. <laughs> this guy. He's a little concerned about the beaver being upset, but <laughs> this is what we do. Shore lunch, yes, sir. Stud Lake shore lunch. Nothing better. Not the kind of fish your grandma used to make. Perfect day for this though. Oh god, just gorgeous. Nice little spot here. So what do you think, Mike? I think this was a good call. It's uh, our best day, uh, weather day out of the week. It's something I don't normally do. So I just want to go on public record here as saying I fully enjoyed this. But I'll do ask. it again. <laughs> this was solely and entirely for Mr. Bob Sterling. Give it up for Bob Sterling, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yoo We've been so disappointed yeah. in the house, dude. <laughs> what? What? Free rods all around. All right, Bob. Hey, Bobby, how you liking that lunch? It was great. Yeah? Great. Highlight of the week. Okay, we, we're at the end of our remarkable day two. I don't actually have a whole lot of video or photos. No. No. Too busy bringing them in. Well. And eating. That's the shore, shore lunch was a big production, but uh, this is a really cool spot. Joe's got a pretty nice chunky walleye here on a blade bait, but there's a point right there. We're, we're in like 16, 17 feet of water right under the boat, but maybe four boat lengths out from that point, it's like 55, 60 feet. It's just unbelievable. Did you just, it just, just got off? Yeah. Nice fish. Though. Yeah. And I'm marking fish like crazy here, kind of on the graph. 14 feet of water right here. There's fish here. Yeah. Really starting to. Oops, I just missed one there. It's hard to fish with one hand. I'm really starting to like the blade baits a lot. They're a go to bait. Yeah, it's been great. Still off the same point, and Joe just. He had a pretty savage hit on the yeah, blade bait. I don't know. Man. Could be a good walleye. It's hard to tell. My guess is, you know, like a kind of a. Slightly larger size pike, but you never know. I think it's the biggest fish I've had in the trip. So oh yeah? Well, we'll find out. Watch be a log. That's definitely not a log. 
my god. A finned log. Yeah, I yeah. think I got it hook weird. Yeah, you get them in the chin or like, yeah. I think I have it in the back. Especially with those blade baits. That happens all the time. You get them in a weird spot and then they feel twice as big as yeah, they actually are. That's what it is. I got yeah. it in the, I think I have it in the belly. Yep. So many walleye here. It's like, the fun thing about I this, way yeah, it's a chunky one. It's just, I've mentioned this already, but we're trying all this different stuff, you know. It works. Yeah, like jigging spoons, blade baits, all kinds of different plastics. So crank was like that. <laughs> different crankbaits. It's a fun lake to experiment on. We're close to the end of day two, and uh, that's the channel that leads into Big Stud. We're kind of right at the mouth. There's a 10-foot hump right here. And uh, three boat lengths that way. It's like 23 feet. It, there's reeds right there. It's a really nice spot. We got this sort of pumpkin seed colored grub on. Real subtle kind of grub. Yeah, that's a chunky one. Nice. Beauty. Excellent. Nice little fish. Yeah, beautiful. Right on. Okay. This just shows the level of service from Deep Wilderness Outpost. It's like 7.30 a.m. It's our third day, our second full day. We, uh, the cabin is running on a solar system. And last night, uh, we didn't have running water. So we're running the Jenny for the lights right now. But we messaged John Small and the inReach device just asked him for some advice on maybe like, you know, if it was the inverter, uh, you know, for, we didn't expect them to fly in. John actually flew in this morning and it's actually raining to come and look at the water system to make sure we're okay. Here comes the man himself. I can't believe he's actually here. This is incredible. I'm blown away. <laughs> We probably could have figured this out ourselves, but John flew in. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, guys. This is wild. We just messaged them on the inReach last night and said we had some issues. And uh, wow, I've never had an outfitter do this in 100 flying trips. <laughs> we have a problem, we try to take care of it. Yeah. Uh, it's been raining like a monsoon basically all morning. So, we're on Little Stud. We haven't really fished Little Stud yet. And uh, believe it or not, we don't normally fish with bait. But uh, the yeah, previous first time group, forever. Yeah, the previous group left it flat. So, you know, we, anyway, we each have some worms. So we're fishing with a twister tail tipped with half an egg crawler. And you can't see it, but anyway, the cabin's like right over there around that point. And, uh, We've got two or three this size already. So anyway, clearly there's a, there's a few fish in this lake. It cleared up, as you can see, and Joe and I made an executive decision to pull our way into uh, Big Stud Lake, and now we're going to go, there's a channel right here. We're going to follow this channel. There's three unnamed lakes, unnamed lakes that we haven't Biggest seen yet. Stud. <laughs> Little stud, big stud, big stud. Two big poles, ready to go. Ready to go. So even though it's kind of a small, an outpost camp on the, on the smaller end of things, there's actually a fair bit of water to explore and fish here. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, nice to break up the scenery. Yeah. And there's no shortage of walleye. This will be called Big Walleye Lake. So we got a little bit of a sunken beaver lodge here. I don't know if we're going to be able to drive over that. Or right, you made it into this one of the three unnamed lakes and just started trolling. I got a hot tot on here. The maximum depth that I've seen so far is 15 feet. Whoa. Little pike. Hopefully we can find some walleye at some point. Unnamed lake action. Joe just slammed one on a blade bait. It's become my favorite lure this trip. 
Yeah. Oh, just ready to pop it. You know, it's an interesting little body of water here that we're just starting to break down. But man, did he want that? Gotta like the blade baits. So oh, you're bleeding on yourself. There, yeah, there you go. Good stuff. You managed to make that one not completely terrible. No. This is a really neat little uh, piece of water, though. We had to go up this. I filmed a little bit of it, but up this fairly long channel to get in here. And there's a series of these three small lakes connected together um, that eventually feed into Peninsular Lake, which eventually feeds into the Atwood River and then the Albany. But uh, this small lakes, they're pretty easy to figure out. We're having a great afternoon in here. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it sure is. All right. Oh, <laughs> hey, right on cue. He yeah, just missed. Know. He just missed one a second ago. So I turned the camera on. On the blade. Again. Nice and close to shore here. Yeah. It's like nine, ten feet right here. Oh, <laughs> That's what happens, you know, when you're up here. The uh, calories are empty, but the days are full. I think we're on to something here now. Big time. It's like every cast, double, double, double. I got one. I got one here. We might have drifted off a little bit, but... Oh, Joe's got a pike. <laughs> oh, wow. That's different. I haven't seen that one. We're actually utilizing the anchor right now, and uh, man, we're getting a lot of fish. Oh, I think there's a storm moving in too, off to the uh, northwest. There's some thunderheads. Yeah, guaranteed way to bring in fish is to have weather. In fact, I think it's raining probably about five kilometers up there. Yikes! But uh, just many of these as you want. I think we're at number 84 on the on the clicker count. So that's just like a little sort of pumpkin color, brown, brownish with pumpkin fleck, a grub. That's actually a five inch grub. It's all you need. It's a little more subtle, but yeah, almost anything we try mm -hmm. seems to be working. Yeah, pretty much anything we're pitching today, they're ready to get. Once you find them. Once you find them. I it's been actually, a pretty good little hole. Yeah, it's been a good hole. The audio is not picking that up, but I can hear thunder mm. way, way off. Of yeah, it's going to look pretty ominous. Going to have to suit up, I guess. Once again, V, you are the man. Steaks, boys. Steaks. We got steaks covered with mushrooms. Caesar salad, garlic bread, baked potatoes, which I haven't got to yet. I'd like to raise a glass. Yeah. And toast. Night, third night. Third, third night. Absolutely. Cheers, boys. Cheers. 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 All right. What a great group and a fantastic meal. Got a gorgeous morning again. We lucked out. Headed on the, <clears throat> headed in the creek through the channel into Big Stud and then back to the unnamed lakes where Joe and I were slaying walleyes yesterday before the storm hit. And so all three boats are gonna meet up there today. We're gonna to fish and I'm gonna do another shore lunch. Mr. Bob Sterling from St. Croix Rods is in his glory this week. He said he's been waiting for 10 years for me to do a shore lunch for him and uh, it'll be two, and, two shore lunches within three days, actually. It's Labor Day Monday today, September 2nd or 3rd, I'm not sure. So we're on the unnamed lakes, uh, just to the southwest of Stud. We set everything up for shore lunch over on the shore, and uh, we're kind of just trolling around with J13s right now on this little lake, trying to uh, search for some fish and keeping them. Two per boat. That's a nice fat one. Cool. So we're in like 10 to 12 feet of water, and that uh, jointed rappel of the J13 is uh, 
It's a perfect lure. It's the puppy dog. Yeah. The wind picked up suddenly here all of a sudden. It's chilly. Alright, this is a spot. Cool. I think we'll switch to jigs. What a glorious spot this is. So is it true, Mike, when you want to know if it's hot enough, you spit in the oil and it spits back, or how do you know? That's exactly what I just did. <laughs> what do you say, gentlemen? Is that fish fresh enough? The fish is exceptional. You didn't have to cook itself to get it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. It'd have to so jump true. out of the lake into the pan. Yeah. You can just hear it singing there. Oh. Okay, we just had this glorious shore lunch. Yum, yum. <laughs> We're back to our spot where yesterday we caught uh, 96 walleyes. We were four short of 100 and then Joe made me leave when the storm was rolling in. Yeah, right. This guy wanted to go. No, 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 no. There was thunder rolling. Of course, I wanted to stay and rough it up. He's lying. So, another fat, chunky walleye on a blade bait. No bait required. We actually have worms right here. We didn't bring them, but the previous group group left a flat, so we we threw some in the boat just in case. You never know. See you later. We got a little bit of wind noise here, but man, oh man, are they ever stacked in this spot? We may actually have to utilize the anchor because it's blowing off the spot pretty quickly. Utilize the anchor. That's a technical term. Yes. What do we got there? A little chunky monkey? Yeah. yeah. He's a nice, they're all like that. Yeah. All, all day long, baby. Somebody should write a song. All right, we have the anchor down. There's not, a, there doesn't seem to be quite as many fish in this spot as there was yesterday. We may have to poke around and, uh, but there's still some here. Oh yeah. Now get your rod throbbing for sure. On the fluorescent orange blade bait. There you go. So this is kind of a unique spot. I mean, it's a small lake, tiny. This is it right here. What you see? Really featureless, soft bottom. I think Joe's got a small pike on here. The biathan. <laughs> We got a little bit of a cold front today. We're basically drifting right down the middle. Actually, it's a walleye snagged just in the fin. A chunky walleye. Um, we're basically drifting right down the middle of this. This is the lake right here. We're not really tight to shore. There's nothing down there. There's no weed. It's soft bottom. That's a chunky one. Nice. Chunky and it's <laughs> so weird. Yeah. Very nice. Awesome. Beauty. Not a bad looking fish. Hold on. Joe's got the old tried and true orange and copper doctor spoon on. Oh, yeah, that's a and like second cast out. Second cast out. Incidental walleye. Why have we been finessing them with like soft plastics and micro blade baits and stuff? <laughs> wow, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice chunky one. Look at that. Very nice. Beauty. Orange and copper doctor. That's the only spoon you need, apparently. Yep. And I've I learned agree. that lesson many times when you come on these flying trips. That's just about it. All you need catches everything. All right, this is day five at Stud Lake. And uh, it's our fourth full day. So for most of the trip now, we've been jigging for walleye because, quite honestly, it's primarily a walleye fishery. But it's now September, what is it, 2nd or 3rd, Joe? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Early September. And uh, Third. There, there is some deep basins in this lake that actually go down to 70, 80 feet. Um, close to shore, sharp breaking shoreline. So typically in the fall, when we're targeting big pike, um, it's trolling and it's trolling sharp breaking rock structures close to deeper water so this is what we're going to be doing we're going to be utilizing the rod holders today uh, that's one of the baits well chewed as you can see 
Hmm. This is one of my favorites. It's a big, fat, wide profile live target sucker. And so normally I use titanium leaders when I'm casting. This is a little bit longer. Like when I'm musky trolling, we'll use even longer ones, like up to three feet long. But this is 120 pound fluorocarbon, which is really kind of a huge advantage over the, um, the smaller 12 inch titanium casting leaders that I use because when you're crashing these things off the rocks, uh, oftentimes your braid uh, has no abrasion resistance. If you don't have this big heavy fluoro leader to give you a little bit of, because it's super abrasion resistant, you can get your braid necked and you can, you can break off. So that's, that's a trolling leader right there. That's one of the rigs we're using, or one of the lures. <clears throat> Another one is the largest size Rapala tail dancer, and we've got this in a number of different colors. That'll dive down to 25 feet. It's not an overly big lure, but uh, it's another one of those dual purpose lures that uh, you know you can get walleye and pike on. Last year, the same week, it was a week later actually, north of Armstrong on Smooth Rock Lake, our biggest pike came on this exact lure, trolling this exact lure. So the other one that we're going to be utilizing today is the live target perch. So again, it's a little bigger than the tail dancer, but it's got a, a large lip and this will go down on a long line, probably 22, 23 feet. So it's perfect because most of the larger fish that we've marked, and we haven't caught, but we've marked, have been relating to the thermocline. So they're about halfway down. So that's literally perfect. So we're, today, that's the, that's the program for, for today. We just started our troll and we're running these uh, deep tail dancers. Joe just got about a 22, 23 inch walleye. And I'm pretty sure I got a walleye on here too. That yeah, was chunky. Larger than average size. It's hard to tell. But. Little snake. I want it to shake off. These are the worst ones to deal with. Oh, he's going to jump. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dance, puppet, dance. Another fish. We're picking them up really consistently. If you look at the shoreline right there, look how close we are to shore. Right here, it's 41 feet on the graph. So we got, it's just like a wall, fast breaking shoreline. And there's a point here that just goes around into a bay. There's so many fish on the graph. It's big ones, too. Well, a lot of big hooks. A lot of big hooks, for we'll sure. We'll see. This is not a big fish, but. It's a nice, easy change of pace. That's a pretty nice walleye, actually. Mm -hmm. Nice fat one. I'm getting a, a slightly larger class of walleye trolling like this. Yeah. Eee. Yeah, that's sweet fish. We just keep making pass after pass along this stretch of shoreline. There's a point up there. And that's uh, bigger. Yeah, no, it's another walleye. Every single pass, it's like double header, double yeah. header, double header. I'm stopping. You can't. He's a little guy. And that's on the live target perch. That's not that little. That's a nice... I'm comparing I'll tell you what, without a doubt, um, the walleyes that we've been catching, pulling cranks, have been... Um, a lot bigger. Yeah, bigger. Like a larger average size for sure. I mean, we're actually targeting big pike. That's the goal, but this is cool. We'll take this. Yeah, times are tough. Yeah, they like that live target perch. Yeah. Oh, easy, easy. Very nice. Bye. All right, next. It won't take too long. We can't go more than 30 feet without catching a fish. Joe switched over to the Fire Tiger Deep Tail Dancer. Another really, it's a, it's a really quality fish. The, the qual, that one is at least as big as the last one, maybe bigger. Careful, because we want to get some pictures of that one. Easy. Oh. I knew that was, I literally knew that was going to happen. Yeah, that was nuts. I couldn't barely get the, the rod out of the holder. And now, of course, it feels microscopically small. Oh, no, that, that was dancing. It was just unreal. Holy smokes. It's not that big. It's stripped line out, actually. No, it's a little pike. Just a little oh, pike. really? I got the strong pike. little pike. This little purple desolate tail dancer. Man, oh, man. 
He must have hit it going the other way because I yeah. couldn't even get my rod out of the holder. That was crazy. Yeah, it's Leviathan. Was okay. So last month when I was at Gangler's, Brendan and I had what we called the pastrami pattern because every time we took a bite out of our pastrami sandwich, we got a fish. So we adhered to that pattern until we ran out of pastrami. <laughs> so anyway, we're trolling the. Rappel of tail dancers. I was just about to take a bite out of my sandwich, and um, literally almost every single time, right, Joe? Every oh, time God. I put the rod <laughs> in the holder to do something, it's comical. It goes off, and this one looks big. This one actually feels good. We'll find out soon enough. But this fish, this fish feels really good. This is on the uh, purple descent. Yeah, you're slaying with that. Today. Yeah, they're liking that one. Let's have a look at this fish. It's getting closer. Like Brendan always says when he's in the boat with me, I just want to have a look at it, Dad. I just want to have a look <laughs> at it. We've been doing really, really well today on walleye, which yeah. hasn't been our target species, but much, much larger average size walleye. Yeah. Like seriously. And this feels big. I'm, I'm semi-excited here right now. What do we got on here? Yeah, and you've had it on for a while, too. Yeah, normally they come right in, right? No, I mean, this was actually hard to get out of the holder again. We just went across, there's a 50-foot <laughs> basin right there. You just sat down and said, oh, good, I just want to say, oh, damn. I literally <laughs> just sat down, and it's, you know what, it's actually a walleye. It's, uh, it's not a pike, and it's not that big. It's a nice one. Really? Holy cow, that is absolutely remarkable. Mm. Probably because it's hooked in the head. Oh, nice, uh, yeah. It's a nice walleye. It's slammed. Like, I, I can't actually, uh, i got to grab the line to get it in the boat. But. Oh. Nowhere near as big as I thought it was. No. Holy cow. Yeah, when you catch them, when you hook them weird like that, different... Wow, he's hooked. Yeah. We're not getting any breaks here from the fish. One after another. This is a really cool spot. It's like 70 feet right here, but... So, it's pulling out line. But anyway, we have to talk about the one that we just lost, and Joe, it's going to haunt him forever. Oh, my God. Massive, massive fish. He's saying it's the biggest fish he's ever had on in his life. It I was think like, it was. It was dead weight, and uh, it got off. It was like a boss battle from a video game. <laughs> Man. So it's, this one's, it's hard to tell. Yeah, I see, you can't really tell, but I mean, this one's okay. Bike, pike, It's you think? for sure a pike. It's yeah. not a not a ginormous, I can tell, but I mean, it's pulling out drag. Yeah. <laughs> but we're definitely in an area here, and they're right. This really the, deep. This is the deepest basin in the lake, mm -hmm. and it's a fairly confined little area. Yeah, it was like, what, 95 feet or something well, where I was? Spot, yeah, it was like yeah. 90. We're in 70 here, right here. Yeah, and it's... Uh, I really wish we could have actually got a look at the one oh that you lost. Oh, God, you wish. Nice That's one. not a bad pipe. A nice fat one. It's about what I expected. Mm -hmm. They're really beautifully colored, these fish. Big white spots on them. It's always a little bit uh, dicey. Yeah, when you got a crankbait on with a bunch of troubles, <laughs> it's a little bit dicier. Grabbing them. There you go. He's gone. Okay. That was that good. That saved you the effort. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's get Leviathan now. Yeah. Little walleye. Not that little. <laughs> it's funny what but little is up here. Yeah. Anywhere else it would be nice walleye. Yeah, that's a nice one. Nice fat one. So many of these guys, it's crazy. Yeah, it's cool. They both it's at the like exact same time 20, they bit. 22 probably. Yeah. Tons of kind of bad exposure here, but anyway, we keep consistently hitting fish. Like, we're not filming every one, but basically every 10, 15 minutes we get bit. We're in this deep basin again. I got 69, 67 feet right here. But, uh, oop, that's going right under the boat. <laughs> Oopa! <clears throat> it's under the boat. Ooh, nice. Oh. oh.
Did you see it? I sort of saw it. Joe's up to bat again. Yeah, nice. Check him out. Pulling the... Uh, oh, I did something stupid and have it fall off. Pulling the tail dancer again. Just another one of these 22-inch walleyes. Nice hooked twice, so I'll do this. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Just it's funny, this looks like a small one, but it's still like a decent fish. Oh yeah, no, that's a nice one. Nice fat one. All day long. Yeah, all day long. When you're nearing the end of our epic trolling day today. Yeah, it's a nice fish. And Joe's, nice. we've been fooled a number of times today, but uh, a yeah, minute... Way to cap it. Yeah, a minute ago, Joe thought he was snagged, and we're in 60 feet of water, so that's not actually... Now it's coming in like nothing, so... It's probably a little snake. I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's a, oh, no, yeah. I think it's a walleye. Bigger walleye. The fire tiger rappel a tail dancer, and it's a little pike, oh, as nice. expected. <laughs> oh, it felt bigger. Yeah. Well, there's no shortage of these guys in here, that's for sure. I sure wish we... Oh, my. Careful now, he's gonna shake. Oh, look at the thing. It's yeah, it ate. It's a fat little guy. So I sure wish we would have seen the one that uh, yeah, that you lost. We're on the trolling program again. Oh. On the second last day here at Stud Lake, and we have a glorious day today. Oh man, it's beautiful. Just absolutely spectacular. Pike. Little pike, Joe just caught. Shortly before the camera was turned on, about a 23 inch walleye. Yeah, nice place. Now we have a little pike to deal with. We're not really using the uh, camera that much, but man, we're catching a lot of fish today. It's like they. Oh, it's a little. That's a little one. That's only like an 18 incher. Nice color. Such a brilliant day. Our second last. Yeah, beautiful. Second last full day here on stud. Pretty special. And we're trying, the goal is some larger pike, but just like yesterday, these pesky 18 to 24 inch walleyes won't, uh, won't leave us alone. Damn you! <laughs> That's on the, the live target perch. You would be setting you up for something there. Oh uh, well, yeah, it's a perfect day today though. Unbelievable. All we really want is another shot at the one that you hooked yesterday and lost. Yeah, I know. I had a... That was a behemoth. That's, that's going to haunt me for a long time. There we are. I love target perch. Yeah. It's Good bait. Its job. Yeah. So a lot of the water we're trolling over is like 50 to 90 feet deep. Right here, close to shore, it's 51 feet on the graph. It's just super deep along this stretch of shore. The deepest basin in the lake. And it was in this area where we hooked the giant yesterday. So, yep, we're just putting our time in. Switching things up. Switching things up here uh, to jigs. Three quarter ounce jig with a four inch uh, Berkeley Ripple Shad in like 45 feet of water here. And Joe's got a pike that was quite the savage head. It's just like that scene from Jaws when he was chubbing, and then, holy, that's <laughs> funny. There you go. Okay. What do you hey. think this is? Oh, it's probably like a 32-inch pike. Yeah, not bad. Something like that. Nice fatty. Okay. They're, they're not overly large, but every one that we've caught is, is putting, putting on the fall feed bag. No doubt about that. Oh, our second last meal. Massive, massive steak. Veggies and foil. We've been, eat, we've been eating good on this trip. Oh, yes. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers Another fantastic Cheers. day. Cheers. Cheers. Another fantastic meal. Yeah. The boys are off. Our last full day. Hey, boys. Have a good one. We'll see you out there. Yeah. All right. Our last full day on Stud Lake, and a beautiful day it is. The boys are just to the right of us there, jigging up walleye on a hump. Way off in the background. We're pulling the deep diving crankbaits in like 70 to 80 feet of water again. 
so many hooks. It's unbelievable. I got the sensitivity maxed out on the graph and it's absolutely amazing how many fish I'm marking down deep. I haven't well, seen what this is yeah, yet. Yeah, I don't know. It's <laughs> probably a walleye. It's probably a walleye, but it could be a little little snake. But the goal here is, you know, a bigger pike. That's what. That's why we're doing this. And uh, it's a little pike. Right species, wrong size. <laughs> that's a fat one. That's nice. We switched over to a jigging program here. Yep. Tools. We're actually in, well, 16 feet right here, but this is the mouth of the creek that leads into Little Stud. It's like 8 to 10 feet. And right out there, it's like 35. It's a great little spot. There's a bank of reeds right there. So, on days like this, like brilliant sunny days in the fall, early September, Right here now we've got 60 degree water temperature. When we first started it was 57. And on a bright sunny day like this, by about midday, which it is now, they'll start making little forays up onto these shallower shelves. There's actually some cabbage. It's kind of half brown, kind of half green. It's kind of like zombie cabbage. And uh, well, that's the result right there. Hopefully lots more. False alarm, we thought it was actually a larger walleye here in our last day on stud, but, but no. No, nope, little snake. It's incredible the amount of walleyes we're actually catching though. It's un unreal. One after another. Yeah. Another crankbait fish. Nice, nice walleye. Though. It's a walleye. It's a walleye. Sky. Nice fatty. All right. You know what, I'll just grab yeah, never mind. Woo! All right, I'm going to do a short tour of Deep Wilderness Outposts, Stud Lake Outpost Camp, north of Nikina, Ontario. The camp itself is located as the crow flies in a straight line about 146 kilometers northwest of Nikina, very close to the Albany River. So it's quite remote. It's about a 45, 50 minute flight in the Otter. And uh, it's a system of three lakes. The camp is actually located on Little Stud Lake, which is connected by a navigable creek to Big Stud Lake. And then from Big Stud Lake, you have three smaller unnamed lakes that are also accessible via a navigable channel. So while it's not a massive body of water, there's we've been here for a week and we haven't gotten bored. There's lots of water to explore and fish and it's primarily a walleye fishery, there's no doubt about that, and a very, very good one. Beautiful open spot on a point here with just a fantastic view. This is the shower house. So it's worked flawlessly for us on this trip. There's a bank of batteries there connected to a solar panel, which uh, lights the cabin. It's all solar electric lighting. Absolutely beautiful porch here with a series of Muskoka chairs, barbecue, just an absolutely world-class view from this porch. One big main room when you first enter, gigantic wood stove that works really, really well. We've fired it up a few times on this trip and the cabin gets very warm very quickly. So at this end there's just a big kitchen table and another little table in the corner there some cabinets for storage, propane fridge, propane stove and oven, hot and cold wa uh, running water at the sink there, three single beds, there's no bunks in here, I'm not a big fan of bunks, three single beds in here and the mattresses to me they look brand new, very comfortable, three single beds, there's actually an extra cot there which obviously we haven't used, but if you had a larger group, it's there. Just a beautiful camp. So there you have it. That's been a short tour of Deep Wilderness Outposts, Stud Lake Outpost Camp, north of Nakina, Ontario. There it is a pike. 
go figure. Ah, first trip of the first trip of the pike. Yeah, first have another one. Oh first shit, first I got one. to be found. There are a few fish to be find. Found. Yeah. Have another one. It's yours. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? That was a big beaver. So, but it... here we have world famous angler Mike Borger in the wilds of northern Canada. Yes. Oh, it's a chunky monkey. Yeah. There's not a lot of thinking or thought required to this angling, thank goodness. That's why he brought me. Joe Condrad, otherwise known as the Blind Squirrel. <laughs> because even a blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes. Now you would never you would never sell out just a minute. I just gotta get that St. Croix up there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, awesome. And feel the fish breathing on your jigs. Ooh, that sounds erotic. <laughs> this one's full of pricks. Not unlike the guy God. who just landed it. Walleye and pike. Yeah. See you later.